Right, so finally we have the crankshaft back uh, from the uh, engineers. As I suspected, it didn't need regrinding down uh, to another size. It just needed a very light hone or a polish just to get rid of any of those uh, uh, sort of ridges, lines. You can run your finger across it now, it's smooth. Okay, uh, if you did taken any more off it have had to uh, regrind it down to the next size which you don't really want to do it's already been reground once as we discovered when we took it apart down to uh, minus uh, 10 thou is it i think i'll check on that in a minute um and uh, so they've just um they've just uh, polished it one one thing uh, to notice and any 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 um uh, sort of engineers worth their salt will know this that, that if you do regrind a crank you do have to leave a, a curve at the end uh, where the journal meets the, the flange the flywheel uh, you have to leave a slight radius a slight radius uh, if you go and um, sort of hone so that it's flat you know there, there isn't a curve there then that will create a, a stress point and the crankshaft can snap. But if anyone, to be honest, is in the business of regrinding crankshafts, I think they should know that. But it's always worth to you know, be aware of that. You should always leave a slight radius at the either end of your journals. Okay, so that's been, um, that's been uh, polished down. Uh, and then I've got some new uh, oilway brushes. If you uh, saw the earlier, some of the earlier uh, uh, videos uh, I started to clean this out and I thought oh, there's a lot of gunge in there and it turns out that most of the gunge was actually the bristles of my old brushes which were disintegrating so uh, I've now bought a new uh, a new set of oilway brushes and so what I've done is I've taken the little uh, slugs out of the uh, oilway holes and I've just uh, been uh, can we see that I think we can I've just been running the uh, brushes through there just uh, to make sure that there's not been any swarf or uh, anything from the uh, grinding process uh, stuck in the in the oilways, which, which I'm sure there isn't. So I've done all that. I've I've run those all through, and uh, they're all nice and clean. All the old, there's there's three uh, three drillings, and I'm using my bigger uh, brush to go through the various drillings. There's one long drilling. This one goes right the way. Can we see that on the video? I think we can. Uh, okay, this one goes. Uh, yeah. So this is the this main bearing here feeds both big ends here. So the drilling goes all the way across. Uh, so that's a very long drilling all the way across the crankshaft from one big end through the main across to the other uh, big end. Like that way. There we go. Uh, so that goes all the way across to the other big end. Yeah, okay, we've got all, any gunge out, it's all clean. And then there's a third, uh, just by the by, there's a third drilling at the other end. And that goes from uh, that big end down into the main. So yeah, the time inside main feeds two big ends and the drive side main feeds just one big end. Okay, so uh, so what I'm going to do now is I've got the plugs and I've got some high strength Loctite. Um, so not normal strength Loctite, this is how I'm trying to find out where the camera is. Uh, high strength Loctite and so I'm going to put that on the little uh, uh, oilway plugs here which these are and these have been replaced at some point so these are a hex grub screw for the uh, oilway which you know if you're, if you're ever going to rebuild the engine always makes sense to do that so i'll put a bit of high strength uh, loctite on these because obviously you don't want them coming out basically because these are going to seal your so you don't want to put too much on because of course you don't want to blocking up the oilway there we go. Okay. So I'll put that first uh, plug in. There we go. And then get it nice and 
really nice and tight. I'll probably use the other um, key. There, got it nice and tight, so that's not going to come out because obviously you don't want that coming out in use. So then I'm just going to um, do the same with the other two grub screws. Okay, so I've replaced the grub screws with the uh, uh, Loctite, so they're in nice and tight. I mean, cleaned all the uh, oil ways out, uh, ready for assembly. But I'm going to take a step backwards uh, before I start fitting the uh, con rods to the big ends because um, I've had a chat with the owner of the engine and we've decided just to be on the safe side to replace the the uh, big end uh, roller, uh, roller bearing. So there's a roller bearing on the timing side and there's a big ball race on the drive side. Obviously, we're, we're replacing the plain uh, bearing shells from the plain bearings, but there's a roller bearing on the timing side and a big ball race on the um, drive side. So the big ball race goes in here and the timing side race goes in there. Um, so we've decided to replace them. So that means I now need to take this race, which I've left on here, because we were going to reuse it and now I need to take it off, which is a bit of a pain to get off uh, often. Um, but you know, it's just for peace of mind, really. The, you know, I've checked the bearings. I'm happy that these, these bearings are okay. But, you know, you're going to rebuild a whole engine. Um, so you might as well replace the bearings. Have I ever rebuilt an engine uh, without replacing the main bearings? Yes, once. That is on my Norton Commando. And um, so I completely rebuilt that and the and I left the bearings in because they looked new and they felt good. And the reason, another reason for doing that is you always got to be a bit careful of modern bearings. You know, is, has, is, is there, has someone been um, duped along the way? People will sell you a bearing saying that these are the best bearings and they're not cheapo sort of Chinese or whatever type bearings. But you don't know, maybe someone's duped them. They, they probably think they're selling high quality bearings, but they, they they could be fakes. You know, people make bearings that are with all different, you know, uh, posh logos on. You think that they belong, they're made by, you know, whichever bearing company. In fact, they're fakes. So there is some sort of method in your madness to not replacing bearings if they're good. Having said that, you know, as a general rule, I'd always replace the bearings buy from a reputable supplier don't buy on the internet and stuff for, for these bearings you probably get them cheap maybe you get a bargain but I, I just don't think it's worth the risk because you don't know what you're buying and you could get ripped off get a cheap bearing and then you know it fails and you've got to strip the entire engine back down again so um i've got to now get this bearing off so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and heat the bearing not the crankshaft and then get a couple of screwdrivers down behind the back of the bearing it doesn't matter if it gets a bit uh, broken getting it off they're a bit of a pain to get off but um you know, well sometimes they are it depends other times they just come off anyway i'm going to heat this bearing up then put a couple of screwdrivers down between the back of the bearing and the flange of the of the uh the web of the crankshaft and see like um, get it off this um, get it off this part of the crank shaft okay so I'm just uh, I've just heated this bearing I'm trying to heat the bearing and not the crank shaft so that the bearing expands slightly and then hopefully it will slip nice and easily off the crank shaft we'll find out in a minute it's difficult to get a pull on it um, because it's quite uh, a long depth and um, there's not much room behind the bearing to get the puller behind so I'm hoping that it, it decides to just slip off we'll see I'll give that a go you never know
Mm. And I'd say that was a hundred percent fail. So uh, back to the drawing board. Well, well, I got the uh, I got the bearing off, but what a battle that was! It did not want to come off the shaft at all. Shaft's too hot. Uh, so I tried. Uh, I've got various pullers and things, but there's no way I can get them behind the bearing. You know, the bearing's actually tight up against this collar here. So in the end, I took out the uh, spigot from the end of the crankshaft, screwed in, and then I just popped in a little blanking nut, blanking sort of bolt. So that I then got my crankshaft pinion extractor, which this is not meant to do. And then I cut off the actual bearing cage and all the rollers from the bearing, just leaving the bearing itself with, of course, the groove in it for the rollers. I mean, the bearing is in fact fine, it was. <laughs> so then I was able to put my um, pinion extractor on and it was just long enough that I just managed to get the claws just inside the, the sort of groove for the bearing and pull it off. But to, to say that doesn't do justice <laughs> to what a nightmare it was. Um, because in fact, with that nut on, then, the, then this, uh, this isn't, you know, it, it's too, it won't go on far enough with that nut. So, um, yeah, so I had to improvise a bit to get it off the first sort of eighth of an inch, and then I could get the then I could get this this on at the back, but it was a nightmare i didn't I didn't want to come off at all, and I'm not looking forward. you can see the probably the chaos on the bench uh and I'm not looking forward at all uh to getting the new one on uh obviously uh mainly the new one um you uh you don't want to damage it simple as that because obviously uh, it doesn't matter that one coming off it's uh, it's going to be chucked but a new one so what i need to try and do is find uh, a drift uh in other words a uh, what do you call it a um one of these yeah can't think of a word box uh, box spanner that's what i'm looking for just the right that just the right diameter uh, you know, something like that one and that will drift it on okay we'll, we'll see but anyway that's off i'm going for a cup of tea because uh yeah that's been uh that's been hard work i thought one minute i, was, I wasn't going to get it off at all and i thought i'd take it back to the engineers just to get that damn bearing off but phew, we're done and uh, I'll have to put the new bearing on. Really, the first thing I want to do is get that bearing on before I start messing about with conlods and so on. So I'm really looking forward to that, like not. Okay, uh, I'm having a cup of tea. Right, so here's the freezer. And uh, in the bottom of the freezer, we've got some veg. No, we've got a crankshaft. So the crankshaft is in there. It's nicely cooling down. The idea is that that will shrink and uh, and help us to get that new uh, timing side bearing on. And uh, and here we've got the uh, in that bit of silver foil there is the uh, is the new bearing. So I'm heating it up. The idea that that will expand. Uh, the problem is that the uh, the cage for the new roller bearing is of course plastic so i'm heating up to 100 degrees which is probably as high as i dare go so get it nice and warm but i'm going to get it you know obviously i don't want the plastic cage to melt or, or indeed be damaged so uh anyway so that's heating up and then i'll leave it a few minutes when the crank i think the crank's cold enough we'll uh, we'll have a go uh, then what we've got is, um, so I've got some wooden blocks and so the crank should stand vertically 
in those wooden blocks and so then i can put the uh i can put the um you know, crank vertically and then hopefully slide the um new time inside bearing down over the end of the crankshaft uh and i've got these uh i've got these uh box spanners and i hope that i can use them to drift the new bearing on if i can't then i'll have to take the things the engineers because really of course what i need is a bench press just press that bearing on if i had a bench press it would be dead easy but of course i haven't got one so uh suddenly the job is much much harder um the bench presses would be great but we haven't got one so i'll try that if it doesn't go on if it jams halfway or whatever i'll leave it you don't want to fight it and i'll take it down to the engineers and get them to press it on for me and there we go uh, that one on uh really easily of course uh so there's the there's a new bearing uh in place all okay uh I want to spin it because it's not oiled yet but, i mean it is pre-oiled but um okay just went on we got the crankshaft it's freezing cold he warmed up the uh bearing so the as a, the crankshaft would have shrunk with the cold the bearing would have expanded with the heat and it's just slid straight on no problem uh knocked it down just knocked it down with this uh box spanner and the uh, lump hammer but it went on no problem at all uh, only thing to note is I am fitting all the bearings with the lettering facing outwards. Now, this is a convention that I was taught. I can't even remember who taught me and told me about it, but it's one I've always used. Now, when I dismantled this engine and including this bearing, I noted that, in fact, all the bearings were fitted with the lettering facing outwards. So I was going to refit them that way. But obviously, someone else does follow this convention whoever rebuilt this engine before has followed that convention so that's what i do uh, i noted that when i took this bearing when it's brand new i took it out of the packaging and both bearing uh races have the lettering facing outwards the outer ring uh and the inner ring they both had the let so i will make sure that they're both uh, facing outwards the outer ring as well because the, of course the timing side roller bearing is in two uh heart parts the outer race is um, separate and that will be fitted in the in the timing case okay um so that's done uh and that's probably where i'm going to finish for today i've been kind of hijacked because i was going to fit the con rods and so on but of course this bearing taking it off and replacing it has in fact taken forever and uh yeah so uh so I'm going to leave it there, but uh, you know, just take one step at a time, especially because the crankshaft is now freezing cold. Okay, uh, what have we got for dinner? Oh, it looks like it's gone. Never mind. Anyway, there we go. We've actually started the uh, sort of rebuilding process. The first thing we've done is to uh, re-block the oil ways up uh, and uh, seal in the uh, club screws and then remove the old time inside bearing and put a new one on. So the sort of rebuilding, the reassembly has begun. So we're on the, we're heading in the right direction, albeit slowly.